Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on behalf of Arcadia Economics on Monday, January 8th. And today we have a video about what a lot of people have been asking, which is how do you actually buy cryptos, Bitcoin, Litecoin, as well as some of the altcoins. And today I have a friend on the line, Lisa, can you hear me? Are you there? Hi there, yes, I can. Hi, Lisa. Lisa's a good friend of mine who's getting into the cryptos and was wondering really how do you go about buying some of these if you're interested. And that's what today we'll dig into. And we're gonna have two parts here. The first is getting started on Coinbase, which gives you access to some of the more popular coins. And then in part two, we'll also dig into a few of the things that show you how to buy some of the alt or utility tokens that are not on Coinbase. So with that said, Lisa, are you ready to get started? I'm ready. And by all means, feel free to throw in any questions here that you have. I'm sure a lot of other people have them as well. Okay. So with that said, first step after you're done checking Arcade Economic for some great financial news and perhaps why people are investing in cryptos, well, then you would come over here to Coinbase. And I'm gonna sign out of Coinbase for a moment here um, and show you what you will likely see when you get there if you're opening an account for the first time. Lisa, are you seeing our Coinbase screen and buy and sell digital currency and ask for the email address? Yes. Okay. So I've created a test address here and just type in your address, click get started, it's going to ask you for your name and all that good stuff. Economics.com, put in a password, you're going to want to remember that. I am here in lovely Colorado today, I'm not a robot. And here I certify 18 years of older, also, you have user agreement and privacy policy. Obviously, there's some riveting legally worded documents that by all means, feel free to investigate and take a look at. So any hidden secrets, you can look there. I'm just gonna click yes for now and create account. And will bring us to uh, this screen where it says verify your email. And they've sent a link to that email address. So we'll go check that and get started. So then it asks you to put in your phone number, which I'm going to go ahead and do, not on the screen here, and click get started. So then we get to this screen, which says enter the two-step code, which has just been sent to my cell phone via text message. So I'm gonna put in there code which is really just verifying a step of verifying that you're the person creating this account um, in general you should not be receiving uh, random emails asking for your codes or logins like this if you're in coinbase and it prompts you that's one thing but there are phishing scams out there there's one that was in regards to ether delta where if you look closely one of the letters is spelled off so in general, um, perhaps there are some exceptions to this rule, but if you're receiving emails asking for login or password information, really be careful about that. Um, but here, since we're opening the account, we go through, continue filling this out. I'm gonna skip this for now. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you're seeing Lisa, how you, you're putting in your basic information. And I believe you've actually done this before. And was that, that part go pretty straightforward? Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll skip ahead. And now I'm going to log into my account and show you what it looks like once you're actually in there. Okay, so here we are. We've logged into the Coinbase account. As you can see up here, we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Ethereum and Litecoin. These are the four coins or tokens that you can buy through Coinbase. 
See those up there, Lisa? Mm-hmm, okay. So again, in part two, we'll show you if you wanna buy other things that are outside of Coinbase, how to do that. Again, uh, and by all means, there are other ways to do this. Coinbase is not the only one. I'm showing the one that I've used and one that works and I understand there are other ways to do this. Welcome to do that, sharing what I've used, uh, especially to help people get started. So <clears throat> basically the next step, if you did decide you logged in and you wanted to buy some coins, next would be to add a payment method. See here you have bank account, credit card, debit card, um, bank account is what Coinbase recommends. Uh, that's what I use as well. Um, I'm sure the process for these two is somewhat similar. But we'll just stick on bank account for now. All right, we're not gonna go through all of that. But again, you could either go and it's in the dashboard, uh, some basic getting your account set up, or if you go to accounts, um, USD wallet, not enable complete account. Uh, you are also going to be requested for your driver's license, the front and back. Um, takes the picture, you can just hold your thing up to the screen. Pretty easy to do. Um, so we'll ask you that. Uh, okay, but yeah, so you're either in your dashboard or buy, sell, you're almost ready to buy. Complete your account, again that add payment method and you see how you went through. And Lisa, I believe you actually, in your account, you clicked the bank account and went through that and it was pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think they, do they have that, you know, they do the two micro deposits, you confirm them to sync up your bank account. I can't remember if it did that, but it did take okay. a full five days. Okay, so in either yeah. case, uh, you click through the bank account, complete those steps. And then it would be similar to if you had a TD Ameritrade account or some other account where basically, um, you know, you're syncing your bank account so you can make deposits or if you want to make withdrawal, then your bank account will be synced in there and you would be able to buy or sell. So far, so good? Yes. Okay, so I'm actually gonna log into my account now so that you can actually see how that looks. All right, now here we are, I'm logged into my account. One thing to note, there may be times where it asks you about the Google Authenticator app, which basically is an additional level of security that you can have on your account. You can avoid that but should you choose to use it, which makes a little bit more secure on your phone, you would download an app called Google Authenticator. And basically then when you're logging in to Coinbase and it says, can I have the Google Authenticator code? Go to your app, there'll be a number on your screen that changes every 20 seconds or so. Type that in and uh, you get into your account and it will look like this. So let's say you've got all that squared away, bank account synced. Now you have a few options here. You can go into buy or sell, as you saw me click there in the top. And again, in Coinbase, you see your four options, which are Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So far, so good? Yeah. So let's say you look at Litecoin and think, wow, only $254, I'm gonna buy some of those. So we click on Litecoin because I put my account in there. Um, it's showing up, um, hopefully nothing too confidential there. Although if you wanna send money to 7890, um, <laughs> fire, fire it away. Um, and now, a few ways that you can go about this. Let's say, now you'll have a weekly bank limit. And what that's gonna mean right now, mine is 15,000. So I could say I wanna buy $15,000 worth of Litecoin, which would be 58.17 Litecoins and click buy. And that would essentially lock in your price. So it takes about four to five days, sometimes a little more or less, depending on what's going on with Coinbase at the time. Um, 
But if you did it this way, where I'm saying I'm buying 15,000 worth of Litecoin at that 254.21 price, um, so essentially when the money comes out of your account in four or five days, rather than having $15,000 in cash, when it clears, assuming the money's in your bank account, you would have actually the 58.17 Litecoin. Now, you could just deposit cash if maybe you thought the price was going lower or for whatever reason did not want to uh, actually initiate the trade yet. All right, so if you click on accounts here, then you're gonna see Litecoin, all that other stuff, then US wallet. If you just wanted to deposit the cash in without initiating a trade yet, you would go here and it asks you how much you wanna put in. Do you also have the wire transfer option? Uh, looks like it goes a little bit quicker. But does that make sense, to just the difference of the two? Um, you know, if you wanted to have cash in your account so you can do whatever, whenever you want, Again, you come to accounts and go there. If you're ready to buy or sell, you can lock in the price without um, actually having the money in your account yet. And when it comes out, we'll complete that trade. Make sense so far? Yeah, makes sense. So again, let's say you wanted to buy $5,000 worth of Litecoin comes out to 19.37. Um, and if you look over here to the right, you can see here the value of your Litecoin at this price would be 49.26. And the Coinbase fee is $73.41. Makes sense there? Mm-hmm. Now, one thing worth noting is that there is a way to lower some of your fees. And if you go to what's called GDAX, that's GDAX.com, we're gonna click on this one here. Um, you would actually, it's synced with uh, Coinbase. So you would log in with your same account information as you did for Coinbase. And what's going to come up is this thing, which uh, if it looks a little overwhelming on first glance. Let's take a deep breath. Um, there we go. Uh, perhaps maybe we should have started with this, but all this stuff, again, can seem a little complex at first. I find the real key is just doing it one step at a time. Some of these things, Maybe you come back an hour later and it seems a lot more bearable. By all means, that's why I recorded this video so you can pause it, you can go through it again, you can review what you need. And really what's gonna help the most is certainly watch this, but then as you go through the steps once or twice, what it's all gonna become a lot more clear. And maybe you don't get it all in one day, just do it one step at a time, you will get there. And um, so if this does seem a little complex, are you overwhelmed yet, Lisa? Are you st still in there? I'm still in here, yeah. Okay, I know you've used GDAX before. We actually recorded this video once before and I brilliantly didn't hit the record button, which hopefully is going this time. Um, but anyway, so this is what GDAX looks like. And essentially, it's kind of like a stock ticker. <clears throat> where if you look over here, these are the offers, down here are the bids, and what that really means, again, these are moving quickly, so, but you see there's 15 contracts, and now 17. This is the number of contracts offered at that price. So let's say you wanted to buy some Ethereum. There's two main ways to do that. We're gonna leave the stop orders aside for today. Um, but if you look at market and limit over here, let's say you just wanted to buy 10 Ethereum at the best price it's offered, you wanna get filled right away, okay? So you put market, order, you would put in here how much you wanna spend, let's say you wanted to spend $8,000, $8, um, it shows you how many Ethereum you're going to be buying you would place hit buy order and 
whatever. So this is uh, seven Ethereum's, whatever price. Now let's say ignore that 74, maybe there is 1.68, 1.68. So you clear out those offers, get filled at those levels and keep going up until whatever size trade you want it to get filled at is filled instantly, removing whatever they're the best offers at the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, if you said, for example, Look up here, the price is about $1,118.50. Let's say you decide, I think things are gonna go a little bit lower, it's gonna move around a bit. Most I wanna pay is $1,100. Okay. Do that too, which is your limit order. So let's say here I'm gonna buy seven Ethereum and the price I'll pay is $1,100. So basically you'd be entering a bid at that price. Now here there's bids that are higher than yours. Here's 1121, 24 mm -hmm. and change. So, but if the thing trades, if it trades lower and these bids all get cleared out until yours is the best and then someone sells to you there. But again, the limit price basically saying the difference between market where it's fill me at the best price on this number right now or this dollar amount versus with the limit order saying this is the most I'm willing to buy to pay I'll leave my bid and if it gets to my price I get filled so essentially in market you're gonna get filled instantly but you'll generally pay more versus a limit you can set your price which you know if you get your price you can get it lower, although if things skyrockets, you may not get filled if it doesn't go down to your price. There's not one right way or another, just hopefully the two options and the differences between them make sense. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's take a look over here. Now, let's say you were, you come here to accounts, and you have your US dollar account. So right now there is not anything, uh, any cash in my account. But if you, uh, let's say we clicked on this one, wanted to deposit funds, you can pull them from your bank account, you can pull them from wire, or they can be transferred over from your Coinbase account. So if you had money in your Coinbase, that would show up here, you could transfer that. And the advantage is that by doing it this way, you get to circumvent those Coinbase fees. So it's an extra step, but <clears throat> again, let's take a look back over here. Um, here, $73 on a $5,000 transaction. Um, and these things do add up over time. I find most of the crypto fees are less than typical trading platform and exchange fees yet course you don't adds up over time so you don't want to burn stuff unnecessarily which is why if you go to the GDAX method and come over here and do it this way get to skip that so that's how you would pull in the dollars here and then if you go back to trade view and here you would have dollars they would show up there and that would if you had ten thousand dollars in here then it would give you the option so if you place a trade you could actually go through and acquire your positions um, on the opposite side now if you wanted to sell everything would just be in reverse same setup here so it all work the same with market and limit orders um, and again, you'd be looking at selling to these bids. Down, the green ones down here. Now, if you put a limit sell order, let's say you said you wanted to sell at 11.29 even. Well, right now you'd be up here. Your, your offer would be a little away from the market, but you'd be able to see yourself sitting there. And if you look here, you would see an open order down there. And should your trade be executed, eventually that would switch over to fills there. You can see I have a couple fills. Um, and 
So, of course, up here you have your chart. And <clears throat> so that's the basic premise of what GDAX is here. Again, here's Ethereum. You have Bitcoin Cash, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin. Um, the same ones that are offered on Coinbase. And uh, like all these things, again, once you go through it, and you don't need to test, you know, your whole college fund, but put like transfer 0.01 Litecoin from Coinbase over here or, you know, $10 or just test a small amount. It will be easier once you've gone through it. But by all means, just be careful. Make sure you know what you're doing um, before you execute a big trade. And uh, for the most part, it's a lot simpler than it looks. Uh, and with that said, Lisa, any questions on any of this or any questions you had the first couple times or how did your experience, I know you tested this one a little bit, um, any thoughts there? When I made an account, it was very simple. I still have this question about when you're putting in a limit order, mm -hmm. you, ha you can put it at anything you want and it gets filled does it, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to look at this chart, do you? I mean, except to see where volume is, but you don't have to look at any prices in this middle chart, do you? These, these boxes yeah. or, or the chart? The, the chart, the boxes. Book. Yeah. You don't have to look at anything. This will just tell you where you stand because See, right now, this is saying the best bid is 11.38, 93, 96, changing quickly. You could price, place a bid for 1138, and you would be down here. And you can go walk the dog, go to Tahiti, do whatever you want. And if you leave your bid in there, it'll just be sitting there. If the price comes down to 1138, and someone sells at that price and all these other bids have either been canceled or, ex or, or executed, then at that point, your order would get filled. If the price were to go from 1140 and just go straight higher, then you would not be filled. But if you want to be filled instantly, you know, you could A, either put a bid, you know, 1140 and 55 cents, so it's closer to the market, or you could do the market order, which would just say, all right, what 10 Litecoin or Ethereum or whatever it is you're bidding for would instantly go out, get the best price that's currently offered as opposed to the limit, which you can set anywhere you want, but it does not trade unless the market comes to your price. Okay. Did that clear that up? Yeah. Um, cool. So. Again, just test things with a small amount uh, and you'll be in great shape. It's simple once you've done it once or twice. And of course you can pause the video, come back, review any of this. But again, like all these things, just do it one step at a time, test with a little bit. And for the most part in a short period of time, you'll have this up and running and uh, pretty much ready to go. Last thing, if you do want to withdraw something, again, you have the bank account, bank wire options. You can send it back into Coinbase. You can also send it to an uh, Ether wallet address or otherwise, which you would put in here and then you put the amount. So if you have, uh, for example, which we'll get into in part two, my Ether wallet address, you can put that here and you could send your Ethereum into that address. Last comment here, I wouldn't recommend leaving things in Coinbase or GDAX. I mean, I think there's a degree to which they're relatively safe, although if you're thinking about where really there are the biggest risk in terms of any sort of hack would be in these exchanges versus at least getting a MyEther wallet or a cold storage device for paper wallet. The one that I'm about to order is the Trezor Bitcoin Black Wallet. Uh, I don't know if my face is covering the price there. Mm -hmm. no, not under there. Uh, I think it's about 150 bucks, 160. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of different models. 
<clears throat> again, I couldn't really tell you the difference between the two of them, although I've listened to a bunch of videos and talked with people who can, and this is the one that I'm going with. There's also a Ledger wallet, which I hear good things about. I'm sure most of them are good, but just the main point being, you can also print out a paper wallet, all sorts of different things you can do, but I would not recommend leaving it in Coinbase or on GDAX long term. It doesn't have to be a complex step, but just something to be aware of. Because again, I think there is a lot of opportunity and great things that can happen, but you know, you want to make sure you're as secure as possible. Um, so again, uh, you know, if you're withdrawing and it's the first time using my Ether wallet, don't send your whole thing at once. Send 0 .0001 or whatever's the smallest they'll allow you to send. Then you go, you test it, you make sure things are showing up and you're doing it right. It's not complex, but there's a lot the first time you do it. So all these things, again, just want people to be secure and make sure that you know, you're, while you're testing things, you're keeping all of your value, which obviously we want to do. So any final questions before we wrap up part one here, Lisa? No, looks good. Alrighty, yeah. so with that said, at this point, at least now, if you've never done any of this before, I think you should know how to buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, or Litecoin. Probably will add more in the future. Um, any questions, leave comments below. Um, one of the things that's nice about <clears throat> the whole crypto world, um, there are other people who can probably help you in the comments section. Of course, if you go to YouTube, um, you had asked earlier before we were recording this, um, what are the fees in Coinbase, for example. And what I love about YouTube, uh, you can type anything in there um get several answers of people that are you know i guess you have to decide which ones are the expert or not but you know go through a couple of those for any question you have so i've learned a lot find out a lot more and um, you know you can also comment and a lot of helpful people with the videos so with that said we'll wrap up part one and in part two if you want to know how to buy the coins and tokens that are not listed on Coinbase, then you're going to want to stick around for that. And we will see you soon. So thanks for watching. Thanks, Chris. The land of arcade.